Welcome to this episode of Mountain Slaughter Garage. Today we're working on our Alpha again. On our last episode, we showed you how to adjust, adjust the exhaust valve cables on this. And when we did that, one of our cables was sticking. It wasn't opening and closing as we pulled on the cable as well as the other side. So the PTL side was sticking, the mag side was, was working pretty good as you pulled and released the cable. So we're gonna have to pull our exhaust valve apart and find out if was it the valve that was sticking or do we have a problem with the cable? So we're gonna show you how to pull that apart. Um, it's pretty easy to pull apart on the mag side because it's really easy to get to the exhaust valve cap right here on the side of the cylinder. There's one on each side of the cylinder and both cylinders have one on each side. Okay, so we're down here at the level of our motor. I've already pulled the driven clutch off and the drive clutch off and we're sitting here with our engine mount plate. Um, there's, I think, three versions of this now. There's the early version, there's this version that came out, and there's a new version on the 21s that's made out of carbon fiber. Um, we're gonna have to pull that off. There's four eight millimeter bolts, a 10 millimeter bolt there on the mount, and then ten, four 10 millimeter bolts that bolt this plate to the engine. Okay, now we've got our engine mount plate off. We want to check this. These are prone to cracking through here. You want to clean it and inspect it really good for any cracks. This one actually looks really good. I don't see any cracks or anything, so we're going to put that down. Now, next thing we want to do, we need to move this chassis support right here. There's two bolts on this end, two bolts on the opposite end, and then there's two torque screws here, and there's two torque screws up here that hold the belt guard onto that. So we're gonna to need to take all of those off. Now that allows us to push our belt guard down here and pull it up here out of the way. And then we can take our chassis support off, put that down here. Now the exhaust cap is exposed on this side that we can get to. A lot of times these are held in, these two torque screws, pretty heavily with some blue Loctite. And so sometimes you gotta put some heat on those to loosen them. Otherwise you probably just break off your Torx tip or strip out the Torx head itself. I've already had these off once so they come out pretty easily. Now, we pull that out. I just pulled her out. There's a little O-ring on it. We want to make sure the O-ring's in good shape. There's a needle bearing inside. We want to make sure it's in good shape. Now we're left with the, um, this is the valve that opens and closes the exhaust transfer port on this side. Now if I pull on the exhaust cable, you're going to see that turn. See how that turns? So what that's doing is, there's this little cutout here. When you are in, when your exhaust valves are down and closed, that closes off your exhaust transfer port. So no flow in when the exhaust valve is closed happens through your exhaust transfer port. But when this opens, it allows the exhaust gases to flow through your exhaust transfer port. And the other thing we need to take out is our pin that holds in the exhaust valve. This is the pin right here. Now, when we put this back together, this pin needs to go right here in this little slot. So when you put this back in, you need to make sure that pin gets in that slot. When you put the pin back in, you put this back in. Okay, now that we've done that, we need to go up to the top side, take these two 10 millimeter bolts out that are on either side of the exhaust valve housing on top of the cylinder. There's one. There's the other one. Got those two bolts out. Now this should just lift right out of here. Sometimes it sticks a little bit because there's a couple of dowels, pins that hold it in. There we go. Now, now that we have that out, these pins right here can hold that in a little tightly. The next thing we need to do, we're going to disconnect the cable from the valve itself. And that's through this 50, 25 um, Torx bit right here. And 
and that pulls out and that just disconnects just like that. We're going to put our valve down for a second. Now, since this is the one we was wondering if this was bad or not, we're just going to pull the cable back and forth and that moves really freely. So I don't think our problem with it sticking was a cable problem. I think it was a valve problem because you can see our valve is pretty dirty. There's a lot of carbon buildup on it. Um, so we're going to, this just slides out like that. We'll take that and we'll clean all the carbon off. When you put this back together, Articat was really kind of smart when they did this. They, it says up on that gasket and up on that gasket. So when you're looking at these like that when you're putting them in, you can read where it says up. Now when you put all this stuff back together, it goes to back together the same way you took it apart. Now you have to remember, when you put the exhaust valve pin in here, it's going to go in this slot right here. It goes through the exhaust valve right there. Now the other side of this is this little valve here, and that pin right there has to go into that slot. So when you put this back in there, you got to make sure that slot is lining up with that pin. That way when the exhaust valve opens and closes, it rotates this valve opening and closing the transfer ports. So, we want to do this on each side. I showed you this side because it's the harder side to get to because of the mounting plate, the chassis plate here that goes on. Um, the other side is wide open as long as your muffler's off, super easy to get to. Um, so when I put all these back together, I'm going to put a little bit of blue Loctite on each one of them, except for these bolts here that already have the nylon lock nuts on them. I won't put it on those, but on these mounts here, the mounts here on the, on the engine plate, we'll put blue Loctite on as well as these torque bits right here. We don't want any of that stuff loosening up. Okay, now that we've shown you how to take the cylinder apart on the machine, we're going to give you a closer up view on how to pull this apart and also a little bit of real basic cylinder and exhaust valve theory. Now we're going to pull this off. We've already pulled our torque screws out of it. So we're left with this exhaust transfer port valve right here. Now when I do this, especially if you're doing this for the first time, you want to make sure you get this back in the right direction because it can go in one of two ways. Um, so I mark this way kind of points a little arrow that direction towards this. It makes it kind of easy of which direction to put it back in. So this comes out the little magnet. We pull that out. And why that is, is if you look down in here, I'm going to turn my other light on, you can see the exhaust pin right here. And that goes through the exhaust valve, the main exhaust valve. And you see as I open and close the main exhaust valve, that pin goes up and down. And that pin like we showed you before, it goes in this slot in this transfer port exhaust valve and that turns this opening and closing right here. If you can see this is where the transfer port comes in from the cylinder. It goes through and then it goes out here to the exhaust. And this little slot here, when it's in this position, the exhaust port is closed. When it's in this position, the exhaust port is open. So that's why it's important to get that pin back into that slot and not it's easy to put it back together in this area right here. So if we line up our two marks, the arrow pointing that way against that, we're going to put it back together correctly and that's, everything's going to work fine. We turn our cylinder up like this. I've got a piston in here. And we're going to shine a light in the exhaust port. I'm going to shine my other light here. So we can see right here, our exhaust valve is down in the closed position. That's where we're going to get at low RPM, probably below about 6,500 RPM. The exhaust valve is going to be down. Our transfer ports here and here are closed. As the piston goes up, it's already got its intake charge. It goes up to the top. The spark plug sparks. We have our intake, our, our ignition explosion, which pushes the cylinder down very forcefully. As that comes down, you just start to see the exhaust port start to open here. But since our exhaust valve is down right there, you can see it. Still no exhaust is flowing out the exhaust port. What that does, that pushes down on the piston from the explosion just a little bit longer, gives you a little bit better low end, and um, it will also help increase your low end uh, fuel economy, your cruise fuel economy. And as that just starts to open, you see the port just starting, then the exhaust gas starts to flow out. The exhaust gases are still pushing on the piston. Since the exhaust transfer ports are closed, since the exhaust valve is in the closed position, these, there's no exhaust flowing out here. It can only flow out here. 
And as we go down, the intake port's open here and on that side. And as the piston goes down to about right there is bottom dead center. The, all the exhaust ports are open. The intake charges come in. All the exhaust is flowing out the exhaust. Now, when we get high RPM, the exhaust valve is going to open. It's going to pull up like that. So you can't, you can't see it anymore. The exhaust port is completely open. So as we're at higher RPM, as this goes up, uh, the explosion occurs that pushes the piston down. As soon as we start getting to the exhaust port, this starts to flow exhaust out. And as we get down a little farther, the transfer ports, we start getting exhaust flowing out there. And why that is, at higher RPM, this tr piston is traveling so fast, there's not as much time for the exhaust to flow out. We're spinning so fast, we're still making really, really good power the more RPM we make. What we, need to, what we need to do to make more power is get the exhaust out as efficiently as possible by having those three ports open. So when we get down here to where the intake ports start open, they can sh start flowing in really well. The exhaust gases go out, um, the intake gases come in, we go back up for other stroke. Now that's kind of a little bit of theory. It's really basic. Um, so the exhaust valve stays open like this at high RPM closes like that at low RPM just to give you better power in both RPM ranges to enhance flow in and out of the cylinder. Now as we come back over here to our machine, we're going to put everything back together exactly the way we took it apart. We're going to put the exhaust valve in through the top of the cylinder first, put those two 10 millimeter bolts in, then on the side of the cylinder we're going to put in the little round exhaust transfer port valve put the cap back on, and then put the plate back on that was on here and put it all back together. Like I said before, I like to, like to put everything back together, blue Loctite. Um, it seems like all those parts have the blue Loctite on them from the factory. So I hope this helps you keep your Articat running better this season. Um, if you like these videos, be sure to click the subscribe button down here in the left uh, lower corner. It's red on the YouTube channel. Um, I hope you guys have a great winter, and uh, we'll see you out there on the snow. See you later from Mountain Sledder Garage.